Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great day, and I hope your holiday season, Christmas and New Year's, everything is um, blessed this year for you. And uh, this is a time, really, as we're drawing near to Christmas, you know, we are always thinking about the coming of the Lord uh, as a baby. And I love that, you know. All of the celebrations are spectacular, even if people don't understand what they're doing or why. It's so significant. Okay, but I want to tell you this. I, probably many of you are like me, and you read through the like the one-year Bible or a one-year plan, and you start right at the beginning of the year, as I did this year. And so uh, what that means is, at this point, you're reading through the Minor Prophets. And if you're not, um, it's very interesting. As I've been reading through it and I've, as I've been thinking about what's been going on, particularly a few of the um, minor prophets have really struck me. It struck. And probably the most um, was Nahum chapter 3 in particular. Um, but the whole book... You know, um, in the beginning, he starts talking about who the Lord is and how he's good, but also how nothing, no one can stand against him. Um, it's very interesting. It was, it was a good thing for me as I was reading it. It's like, yeah, that's right. You know, sometimes I think we overestimate, uh, you know, how much evil people could actually do, you know? We overestimate, um, you know, just like how, how uh, effective they are. Let's put it that way. And these days, evil seems to be more and more effective. But, you know, reading that, it's like, yeah, that's right. This is, this is right. This is completely right that God... Like nothing, a mountain, an ocean could not stand in the presence of God and, and think it would uh, win. You know, they cower, they crumble. Oh, we got some blue jays out here. Uh, so then in Nahum 3, the prophet basically comes out and says, look, God's against you and taught it's speaking to the city of Nineveh okay and the things that were detailed there to me were like screaming this is where the United States is at completely given over to sexual idolatry completely trusting in its abundance the might of its army completely trusting in all of its you know uh preparation and fortification for survival but not honoring god and not living a life that would you know point people to god or to um even reverence him as a matter of fact pursuing false idols pursuing immorality you know Instead of, like, literally, like, prioritizing immorality, sexual immorality, above human life. And as I was reading it, man, I was like, this is where we're at. The United States. It's not just the United States. I, I'm assuming, but I, I can't speak to those other countries. But there's a lot of countries in this same spot. But we are completely not only defending, we are legislating wickedness and unrighteousness. We are legislating here in the United States. We are legislating um, basically a provision for sexual immorality, for the destruction of life as a result of its sexual immorality. Uh, prioritizing that sort of culture, 
cultural destruction and basically um, wholesale rejection of God, prioritizing that and legislating that as the way of what is right versus actually looking and humbling ourselves and, and uh, you know, repenting. So, I read all that and I'm, I'm just struck by it. I was really looking at it and thinking, man, Lord, how is it? Honestly, when, when you know, even, even in the book of Nahum, he's, that's where it says, you know, God is, is mighty in power, but he's slow to anger. Like, okay, Lord, I mean, I know there's a lot of believers here. How have you um, held back for this amount of time? Because we are running in that direction. And look, I'm just at this point where I think as believers, there's a couple things that need to happen. Okay, so I'm assuming if you're watching this, you're a believer. Okay, maybe not. Maybe some unbelievers are watching that. Um, that's fine. Let me tell you, uh, this will make sense either way. First, if you're a Christian, if we need to walk in righteousness. We need to walk according to the word, okay? Because honestly, like looking at a biblical pattern for these things, when God warns a nation, the result of that warning should always be that people that know him, humble themselves they take they evaluate really where their life is and they call out to him for mercy and grace okay so we need to be in that place as believers and we need to be praying for our country okay um, we need to be praying diligently for repentance because I personally believe like reading those warnings to the nation of Israel like in some of the other minor prophets to the to the city of Nineveh. I mean, God didn't owe this. This We're talking about a country, right? Or, or a city, the city of Nineveh, a wicked, a city given to wickedness, following false gods. And God went out of his way to send a prophet to deliver a message to them, basically saying, you guys need to stop it or I'm going to destroy you. And eventually, God does do that. I mean, I mean, I I know where Nineveh is, but it, it's not a place that, you know, like New York City anymore. But God goes out of his way to do that. And I think when I look at the United States of America, how God has gone out of his way, not only to send a few, but to send thousands of men over the course of its history to speak truth, to teach the truth. We have... Uh, churches here we have institutions that are literally like completely dedicated to god's word and to delivering it to the people here and yet people are not listening anymore a large number of people are not listening anymore and i think man if if god did that with nineveh right and yet we have been blessed so much as Americans. We have been blessed and yet we have forsaken that heritage. We have forsaken the history, right? We've completely ignored, you know, all, all that God has done in our past, completely ignored it and are running as a country, right? I'm, I'm not necessarily saying all Christians are doing this, but the church is actually on board in general, churches, there are more churches on board with this than ever before. Complete wickedness, catering to sexual immorality. Um, so we're at this point where I look at that and I think, man, we're in trouble. You know, and, and even when you read through these prophecies, you see God saying, I'm against you. And I, I'm just wondering... Like, where are we at in all of this as the United States of America? And so we need to walk in righteousness as believers. We need to repent. We need to honor God, glorify him. 
be, you know, we need to walk in fear of God in, in the sense that we understand he knows everything, he can do anything. That's, that's sobering, right? But also know who he is. And we need to continue to tell people about how bad following sin, how bad ignoring God and his love and his grace and his goodness, especially at Christmas time, right? Christmas is here, right? People understand, that, you know, Jesus. Of course, the, our culture has turned it into a, you know, a economic holiday and they've turned it into Santa Claus. But look, everybody knows this this is about the Lord Jesus Christ coming to the earth and this is the time there is an easy open door to say look this is serious because the Lord came and now people are pretending like he didn't this is serious because it wasn't just about a baby showing up here it was about a man who died on the cross for our sins and now people are rejecting that and this is a perfect time because there's an open door to talk about the Lord Jesus Christ. And listen, we need to pray and we, we need to be diligent about this because this is the battle, right? This is the battle for men's souls. I know a lot of you guys that watch my channel are complete warriors and you're committed to sharing the gospel. And listen, we need to keep that up. We need to pray for God to change hearts and minds to do a radical change in, in the world around us to, to pull back the, and reveal the lies of the enemy uh, that are being um, perpetuated in our culture and in our society. So anyways, I know this is, I look, for me, I think this is just a reminder, especially as the new year is coming around, right? It's a reminder of where we're really at. It's a reminder that in all of our celebrating, we also have to be holy about it, right? We, ha we have to understand uh, what it is that we're actually celebrating and how important it really is. So I hope that blesses you. Thank you so much for watching this video. May the Lord richly bless you. Have a great day and I'll see you again.